Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can use different multiplication properties to be able to help us solve related facts. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the commutative property and distributive property to solve related facts. So remember, the commutative property is where you can flip-flop the factors and still get the same product. And the distributive property we can use to break apart multiplication problems and break apart factors that we know to maybe use an easier factor to help us solve maybe one that maybe is a little bit harder. Okay, so let's get started. So I want you guys to solve this application problem. It says Jocelyn ha says seven fives has the same answer as three sevens plus two sevens. So I want you guys to pause the video, go ahead and solve this problem on your whiteboard and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So I can look here and say that three sevens plus two sevens equals five sevens. Then I can look to say, okay, well, the problem's talking about seven fives and I'm really kind of comparing it to five sevens because when I add three sevens plus two sevens, it gives me five sevens. So I'm really trying to see this five sevens equal seven fives. And oh, because of that commutative property, I know that they do. So Jocelyn is correct because you're just using those flip-flopping those factors. Okay, so let's use kind of what we talked about in that last problem to see how we can help us solve this one. So as I draw circles, I want you to count the sevens with me. So there's one seven. Now I have two sevens. Now I have three sevens. How many sevens do I have now? Four sevens. Okay, how about now? Five sevens, awesome. Okay, so this is one way you can model to show that. What's a multiplication fact for five sevens? It's just five times seven. Okay, so let's use the commutative property to name the related fact. So if I know five times seven, what would be when we flip flop it using the commutative property? You guys tell me. So you're it. What is the related fact to seven times five? Oh, I just gave that one away, friends. Oh, silly Mrs. Walker. It would be five times seven and seven times five. Okay. All right, so let's look at another thing. So what are five sevens, five times seven, and seven times five all equal to? I want you guys to give that a try. What do you think they're all equal to? What's the product of all of those? Okay, so pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So five sevens, seven times five, or and five times seven are all equal to 35. All right, so let's use our familiar fives facts to find facts we haven't learned yet. So those fives, we're gonna count by fives, right? Remember like five, 10, 15, those ones are so much easier to use to solve with. So anytime you can break apart something using like the distributive property, super awesome to help with those fives. So let's look at this model. So here I have five sevens and one seven, right? So see how some of them are in white and there's one in yellow. So what's five sevens plus one seven? Yeah, six sevens. Okay, so how does this show the total of six sevens? Yeah, so if we look, we can see that five times seven is 35 plus the one seven is seven. So what's the total of six sevens, friends? So 35 plus seven equals 42. So look at that. So six sevens equals 42. Okay, so let's use the commutative property to write two multiplication facts we just solved. All right, so you're it. So write on your board the two facts that we just solved when we talked about six sevens. All right, if you need more time, click pause. Otherwise, here we go. So here's the two facts, six times seven and use that commutative property, seven times six. All right, so let's compare five times seven and six times seven. What's the difference between them? So take a minute to think on your own. 
pause the video, think what's the difference between those two multiplication facts right there? All right, make sure to click play, or pause if you need more time, then click play. All right, here we go. So when I look at it, I see that six times seven has one more group of seven than five times seven. That's what we just saw when we used those dots before, the five sevens and the six sevens. And also, friends, think about it. By noticing that six times seven is only one more group of seven than five times seven, we use that total of five times seven to help us make an easy addition problem to find six times seven. So that's when we did five times seven was 35, plus seven, because that's one more group to get us that six groups of seven. So 35 plus seven gave us 42. Okay, so let's try this with another one. So let's use those five facts to help us find another one we haven't learned. So I'm gonna model six times nine. What's five nines plus one nine? Yeah, six nines. Okay, how can we show this? So let's talk about how we can create an addition sentence to help us solve this problem with five nines plus one nine. What's that gonna look like, friends? So five nines is gonna give us 45, plus one more nine would give us plus nine. So 45 plus nine. What's the total of those six nines? So 45 plus nine. Yeah, it's 54. So 45 plus nine equals 54. So we might not have learned our sixes yet, right? But we've learned our five. So we can use those fives and just add one more group to it. So anytime, friends, you can use those fives. Use them, it'll help you out. Okay, so what's the commutative, or let's use the commutative property to write the two multiplication facts we just solved. Okay, make sure you're using that commutative property. So tag, you it. So go ahead and pause the video, write the two facts that we just solved for, and I want you to solve those two facts this time. So remember we talked about, it was six nines. So six times nine is one of them. Hint, hint, you have to come up with the other. And then I want you to solve both of them. So click pause, so you can do that on your whiteboard and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, here's the two facts that we just solved for. So six times nine, and nine times six. So if you know six times nine, friends, you automatically know nine times six. So six times nine equals 54, you got it. So automatically we can easily know nine times six equals 54. Awesome, friends. Okay, so let's do another round of practice. So here we go, we're gonna do six times eight this time. So you're it. I want you guys to be able to solve for six times Eight. So think about how can you use those fives to be able to help you solve six times eight. So go ahead and pause the video. Solve six times eight. Use those fives. Remember, we can do five times eight plus one more group of eight. So go ahead and give that a try. And click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. Make sure to pause if you need more time. Okay, so here I'm going to model it for you. So there's six times eight. I'm going to break it apart. Remember, this is just using the distributive property, friends. This is just kind of a simple, simplified way to do it. So we have 5 eighths plus 1 eighth, which gives us 6 eighths. We can show this by doing 5 eighths is 40 plus 1 eighth is 8. And then with a total of 6 eighths gives us 48. So 40 plus 8 equals 48. All right, so on this one, I want you guys again to use the commutative property to write the two multiplication facts that we just solved for. Okay, so you're it. Pause the video, write the two facts that we just solved for. Okay, we did six times eight, and then the other one, go ahead and write that as well, and then solve for both of those, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, we solved for six times eight and eight times six. And six times eight is 48. So eight times six has to be the same, which is also 48. Okay, so wow, you guys did a great job using the distributive property and the commutative property to find known facts. Okay, so we use those known facts of fives to help us solve for those larger facts with sixes 
and eights or sixes, sevens, eights, and nines all today. So you guys rocked it. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.